Hey everyone, it's Jensen. Today is Monday, October 12th, and from a visit from presidential nominee Joe Biden to the first day of hearings for Supreme Court nominee Judge Amy Coney Barrett, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, I want to get you all caught up on the latest coronavirus data from the state. Today, there were 1,430 new cases of coronavirus compared to the 21-day average of 1,191. There were six deaths reported compared to the average of 18, 43 new hospitalizations compared to 77, and six new ICU admissions compared to the 21-day average of 11. And today was day one of hearings from the Senate Judiciary Committee for Supreme Court Justice nominee Judge Amy Coney Barrett. After sitting silently through almost four hours of opening statements from members of the committee, the 48-year-old laid out her approach to the bench, which she's compared to her conservative mentor, the late Justice Antonin Scalia. Courts are not designed to solve every problem or right every wrong in our public life. She told senators that she is forever grateful for the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's trailblazing path as a woman on the court. But Joe Biden's running mate, Senator Kamala Harris, said the court is often the last refuge for equal justice, and a Barrett nomination would put everything Ginsburg fought to protect in jeopardy. Harris claimed that not only health care, but voting rights, workers' rights, abortion rights, and the very idea of justice are at stake. And if Barrett is confirmed quickly, she could be on the bench with the Supreme Court. Here's the latest challenge to the Affordable Care Act, which is just one week after the election. And that was the main focus for Dems as we continue to fight COVID-19. But committee chairman, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham opened the hearing by saying the COVID problem in America is real. But he did say we do have a country that needs to move forward safely. And unless something big happens, Republicans seem to have the votes to confirm Barrett to a lifetime seat on the court. And hearings pick up again tomorrow at 9 a.m. So you can watch that all on our website, WTOL.com, and on our Facebook page. But we had two big time politicians in Ohio today, starting with Vice President Mike Pence in Columbus. Pence landed at John Glenn Columbus International Airport just after 11.40 a.m. as part of a Make America Great Again event. He talked jobs and voiced support of law enforcement promising law and order. He talked about reform for the VA and health care for veterans and, of course, Pence voiced strong support for Judge Barrett, expressing strong confidence that the Senate will soon vote her in to the Supreme Court. Now the Senate has a job to do. And after they discharge their duty to advise and consent, I'll make a prediction. Judge Amy Coney Barrett will be Justice Amy Coney Barrett. We're going to fill that seat. The vice president wrapped up his speech encouraging Ohioans to get out to the polls, promising safety and a new Republican majority in the House and a renewed majority in the Senate should he and President Donald Trump be reelected. We're going to make Ohio and America more prosperous than ever before. We're going to make Ohio and America safer than ever before. And with Troy Balderson in a new Republican majority in the House of Representatives, with a re-elected Republican majority in the United States Senate, with President Donald Trump in the White House for four more years, and with God's help. We're going to make America great again. And we have his full speech on our website right now, so you can check that out if you're interested. But right here in Toledo, Democratic nominee and former Vice President Joe Biden stopped by the UAW Local 14 for a private event, and he took some shots at President Trump over his handling of the pandemic and promised to build back better using American workers. Biden took the stage outside in the parking lot in front of a number of American cars, including the Toledo-made Wrangler and Gladiator. Hello, Toledo. This feels like coming home. Biden said his Build Back Better plan is based on the idea that it's time to reward work, not wealth, claiming his plan would create 18.6 million jobs in the next four years and that he wouldn't raise taxes on anyone making less than 400000 a year. Biden's list of promises also included high-speed broadband in every American home, rebuilding crumbling schools and rebuilding infrastructure and roads. And he said that all of these promises would be fulfilled using American union jobs. Biden did take some jabs at Trump, like I said, saying when it comes to COVID-19, the president was more concerned with the stock market than science. He said Trump knew how dangerous it was and chose not to tell the public. Ask yourself, why didn't he tell us? Why didn't he warn us? 
He said nothing. He told Woodward that he didn't want to panic the American people. That's why he said nothing. We don't panic. America doesn't panic. But Trump panicked. His reckless personal conduct since his diagnosis has been unconscionable. The longer Donald Trump is president, the more reckless he seems to get. Biden ended his speech on a more optimistic note, though, trying to unite a fractured nation. And looking at a recent poll, the candidates are nearly neck and neck in Ohio, which could be why we're getting all of this love right now. But while it is close, President Trump currently has a slight lead over the former vice president. According to the latest Baldwin Wallace University Great Lakes poll, President Trump holds a 47 to 45% lead over Biden, which is an improvement for the president since the last Baldwin Wallace poll released last month, which had the two in a tie. But the current lead is within the margin of error with at least 5% of people surveyed saying they still don't know who they're voting for. And if you wanna look over those complete results, have at it. That is again on our website, WTOL.com. And okay, today was politically dense, but that's why I'm going to wrap up here with something a little bit more fun and silly and totally not related to the election. Now, there's another Game of Thrones happening, but definitely not the one you've been anticipating. For the third consecutive year, a Michigan high school has launched an out of the box fundraiser they hope will generate $20,000. Here's how it works. On the night before the first day of the fundraiser, a few seniors load up decorated toilets on the back of a pickup truck and drop each of them off onto five unsuspecting community members' front yards. When the first victims wake up and see that they've been thrown, then they have three choices to get it removed, and each choice has a price tag attached. $10 gets the toilet gone, $20 and you can tell them where to take it next, and $30 gets them potty protection insurance, which means it just can't be returned to that same property throughout the duration of the fundraiser. And this is probably the most unique and interesting fundraiser idea I've ever heard, so kudos to you kids. Love that kind of creativity, thinking outside of the bowl, I guess. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and of course subscribe to our channel. I'm Jensen and now you are in the loop.